dream about their wedding day, usually the bride. And yet most people get nervous once it gets closer. Making sure dresses are ready, catering is taken care of, where to hold the reception, and the actual wedding. Who will be the minister? Best man? Maid of honor? Who do you invite? How are you going to pay for it? Eventually, though, the wedding comes. You make your vows, and then off to the reception for eating and dancing, and then have a smaller party for just you and the spouse starting off the honeymoon. Now there's nothing more to worry about, right? It's a bit forgotten that marriage doesn't start and end at the altar. In fact, although the wedding officially starts the marriage, it begins long before that. A good marriage has to start off with a strong foundation, which relies on three things. Faith, commitment, and kids. Now, don't get your panties in a twist. All will be explained. First is faith. Although many people think you can get married in a courthouse, the actual start of marriage started in religious ceremonies thousands of years before governments were founded. It was the will of the god or god or the gods or whatever that this marriage should go down. And there was a big ceremony that would occur. Although weddings have changed over the years and with different religions, they still have several similarities. First, there's the officiator, some kind of minister or priest. It also takes place before God or gods and man, with a minimum of two witnesses to say it actually happened. They also made sure to decorate the place as beautifully as possible for the culture in question, usually with flowers and fire, some of which held other significance outside of the beauty. People show up in fancy clothes, some so fancy that they are only worn for that particular wedding. Although men usually wear dark clothing, they often wear a small flower in plain view. The women usually wear something in bright colors. What's with all the light and beauty, you ask? Well, it was a representation of God or gods. How many religions do you know where the good people went to some dark place after dying? This wedding was going to bring the groom and bride as close to heaven as they were going to get before dying. And you made sure to do it right because you only had one shot. That brings us to the second point. No marriage lasts without commitment. Although modern society has brought it down to a simple contract, that alone shows some kind of commitment. These two people are no longer free spirits, but become one flesh. They share a home, money, heartaches, joys. They even share family, the infamous in-laws. When you get married, you now have two fathers and two mothers, and a whole slew of new brothers and sisters. Many cultures have to get permission from the father of the bride before the wedding will even happen, and most men are not willing to ask for a daughter's hand in marriage from a loving father unless they plan on sticking it out or facing the dire consequences. If one looks at bad marriages and especially divorces, the commitment is definitely missing. It's not often that someone who divorces doesn't eventually remarry. Sometimes it's because they want to marry someone else that the previous marriage doesn't go well which shows that the commitment obviously doesn't exist anymore, if at all. One obvious sign to the outside world of this commitment is children. Although people can see the first, and agree with the second, the third one really tri trips up modern society. It used to be that a large family was a sign of a good marriage, but now kids have been given so many negative stigmas. They cost so much, they eat, sleep, and cry all the time, they're messy, and they take too much time out of your life to take care of. However, of the three points, having children is probably the most important part of any marriage. In fact, society is based off of that family. It is in a family that right and wrong is taught, where yesterday's society becomes today's society. No movement lasts unless it's carried on through the children of the people who started it. Children become the adults who change the world. But if it's not your kids pushing forward your values, it's going to be someone else's kids pushing theirs. In fact, that's why the most brainwashing practices in com communist countries occurs in schools when people are young and impressionable. That way, when they grow up, what was once a kook idea is now accepted by the majority of people. But why does a society really care about all of this? Who cares how it started? Or if you have any kids at all? The cavemen seem to get along without it, right? Well, to begin with, if they really did so well, we'd still be cavemen, right? Secondly, societies and government were, are built on family, whether they remember it or not. 
More people are likely to care for their own family before a stranger, and they learn what care is by being part of a family. Orphans constantly seek a new family, whether that be the foster home or a local street gang. Humans are wired to seek that familial connection, even when we're told it's no longer necessary. Not to mention a society dies off pretty quickly if no children are born or survive long enough to become adults. People in a good marriage make good workers, not only because they seek to support said family, but also because they know the meaning of commitment. A family strong in their faith are far less likely to raise criminals and other undesirables than those without it. Without a strong marriage, society crumbles, leading to the chaos we are starting to see today.